Chica. So this is the second video in a three-part series um, all about when to toss the two-pound rule of stabilization out the window. So there are basically three scenarios that I came up with um, when you just most likely will not be able to stabilize within two pounds of your LDW. And, and that's okay. Um, and we're going to talk about in this particular video um, the second scenario, which is when you choose to incorporate like rigorous exercise into your phase three. And we're not talking just about like, you know, taking a daily, you know, two mile walk. Um, if you do rigorous exercise, we're going to talk all about why you may need to stabilize higher than that two pound window. Um, the other reasons that we're discussing the first video, which I've already made, and, and I'll link to that, is. Um, when you end up not eating the fruits and melba in phase two, or you rarely did, um, that's an occasion where you most likely will have to stabilize higher than the two pound window. And so you can check all into that. I'll link to that article below. Um, and then the third reason will be in the next video, which has to do with if you are just having to do a million steak days and your weight just will not stay where you were intending it to, um, we'll talk about you know, when and why you may have to consider just stabilizing higher. Um, so the reason that I came across, you know, or basically had these little epiphanies with this is, is because my own journey with the HCG protocol has been kind of unique. And, and I've tried those kind of funky things like not eating the fruits in phase two, um, exercising rigorously in phase three. And, and I discovered along the way that um, there were very logical scientific reasons that I could not stabilize in the two pound window. And when I didn't do those things, I could. Um, and the point is really that it's not bad in these cases to need to stabilize higher, but it's important for us to understand what's going on, why it's happening, so that we can go ahead and stabilize higher and be okay with it and know that we're still, we're doing well actually and that our body is functioning properly. So if you are dead set on exercising in P3 and you want to get fit and strong and you don't want to wait till P4 to start doing that, um, you most likely your weight will not stabilize out um, as quickly as others who don't do this. So it may seem a little more fluctuating for a longer period of time and most likely you won't be able to stabilize in the two pound window. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about my own story with that in a little bit, but first I'll just give you a little bit of the, the different scenarios where this might happen. So there's a lot of different factors that kind of come into play with, with how your weight acts in phase three when it comes to involving exercise. Um, you know, it depends on if you were already exercising before you did your round and, and you're just kind of like getting right back into it. Um, or if you've been, you know, um, you haven't been doing any type of exercise for a long time and this is your first time getting back into exercise. Also the type of exercise that you're doing, the duration of it. And depending on how deconditioned you are, how much water retention you experience when you're getting back into exercise will vary. And so that will you know, make the fluctuations on the scale vary as well. Basically what happens when you work out, you get sore, right? What happens when you get sore is that your body is actually breaking down your muscle. It's breaking down your muscle where you're sore and it's rebuilding it stronger and better. Um, and in order to do that, it actually surrounds your muscle tissue and stuff like that with water. So it surrounds that area with water and fluid um, and, and all of that repair and healing goes on. And, and that's, that's how you build stronger muscles. And actually when I was learning about this, I thought it sounds so funny to think about you're kind of basically having to lose muscle to gain muscle. You know, your body's actually tearing it down. It's, it's getting like, you know, what are those called micro, microfiber tears or something in your muscle when you work out, you're actually like tearing your muscle and then it's rebuilding it stronger and better. Um, so as a result though, there's that liquid retention. In fact, this is really a funny thing. Um, whenever at CrossFit we do something that's like a major ab workout, like you know, 150 or 200 sit-ups or something crazy like that, we do th that type of thing all the time. Initially, I will come home and like that evening, I'll, a few times this has happened, I'll notice like, man, I feel like actually extra pudgy around my middle tonight, you know, and I'm like, and that especially doesn't make sense because 
I did 200 sit-ups and it's not like I was expecting the 200 sit-ups to make my waist smaller, but I definitely wasn't expecting them to make my waist bigger. <laughs> and you know, what I realized was is that my abs were so sore that they were swollen with water. Um, and so technically my stomach was bigger, um, but it was just temporary, you know, um, after the, the water retention goes away, you know, your muscles heal there and, and then all that water is gone and, and you're fine again. But, but that is a real thing that, that does happen to me. Um, and it's that thing, it's that mental thing where if you don't know the reason, you could feel discouraged and then you could end up doing something stupid, you know, like eating chocolate cake because you feel sad that your waist feels fat that day. Um, you know, that's just something that we women tend to do. Um, so that was something that I had to realize that scientifically is going on. Your body is actually doing what it needs to do. And, and those things that you experience are just temporary um, while your body is recovering. I'm going to refer you guys to um, a couple articles actually um, that kind of talk more about this in detail, but this particular one, um, I'm just going to quote it, it explains that when you start doing more exercise, your body begins storing more fuel in your muscle cells where it can be used easily and quickly to fuel your workouts. Um, and that's talking about like the glycogen stores. The process of converting glucose or carbohydrates into fuel that your muscles actually store and use, glycogen, requires three molecules of water for every molecule of glucose. As your muscles are building up glycogen stores, your body has to retain extra water for this purpose. So does that make sense what they're saying? They're saying that actually as you build muscle and as you, as you put these exercise demands on your body and your body starts responding and being like, oh, you know, this lady <laughs> wants to do weightlifting three times a week and, and, and it's always happening a few times a week. So in response, it's like your body starts storing more fuel, um, which is that glucose or carbohydrates. But in order for your body to store more of that, that carbohydrates, it says it takes three water molecules to store one molecule of glucose. So it's like every time your body needs like, you know, basically one more molecule of glucose that it stores, it's got to have three more molecules of water. And so people who have a lot of muscle on their body um, versus fat, they can typically gain and lose several pounds of water weight um, essentially overnight. They can basically gain and lose that kind of weight very quickly because their body has a lot of muscle and it stores a lot of that fuel, that glycogen, uh, more than a sedentary person um, who has like a higher body fat percent. So I hope that makes sense. Um, but just to kind of show you guys, you know, that there, there's some science involved in this um, and it's really helpful um, to, just to know what's going on with your body. Um, so it's extremely common for people, even unrelated to HCG, to complain of weight gain when they start an exercise program. I, I mean, I hear it all, you guys have heard it. We hear it all the time, you know? Like, oh my goodness, I've been doing this exercise program and I've only lost two pounds in like 10 weeks, you know? And it's probably, it's not that they haven't lost fat, most likely, um, but their body is building muscle. And when you first start, your body does retain that water because it's repairing your muscles and it's storing more fuel to, you know, to be able to fuel your next workout. So it all evens out in the end, but you know, the scale can't tell us any of this stuff. So it can really kind of freak out and put you like totally on a head trip um, if, if you're not aware of this kind of thing. I'm gonna refer you guys to another great article on how muscles store water after a workout um, that's linked to in my article. Um, notable in it is the fact that it says basically that trained muscles store quite a bit more glycogen than untrained muscles. So if you've been working out consistently prior to your last round of HCG, um, and this is me by the way, not the article now, um, it's very possible that as you get back into working out three to six weeks later, um, your muscles will store more water more quickly, um, giving, the appearance of the, giving the appearance of more weight gain in P3 than someone else. So I hope that that makes sense as well. Um, for a person who has a trained body and you take a three to six week break from your exercise, but then jump right back into it, your body's gonna be storing more fuel, more water, you know, more glycogen right away. So it's just, it's gonna appear as if 
your P3 is more rocky, when in reality, your body's just refueling that fuel because you are a in shape person. Um, I mean, there's even, even if you're overweight, you can be fit in the sense that you can, if you've worked out hard, you can have really good muscle mass um, and your body can store that fuel. Um, so that may happen to you as well. You don't have to be like a thin, only thin people that happens to you. It just, it's just if you are a seasoned person when it comes to working out, um, that can most likely happen. So the question is, if you do choose to exercise in phase three, and it's a completely a personal decision, how do you handle this resulting scenario? Um, do you try to stabilize within the two pound limit? Um, do you do a million steak days if necessary in order to force it? And if not, where do you find the balance between you know, letting your weight go up a certain amount um, before putting on the brakes? You know, it's like, how, how do you decide where to put an end to the, to the gradual gain? As far as my personal opinion goes, I kind of feel like you might be fa you know, facing a losing battle um, if you if you try to stabilize in that two pound window, if you're really kind of going back into like hardcore exercise and you're working out really hard, um, I just feel like you're almost going to be kind of working against your workouts in a sense. Like the purpose of your workouts is to, you know, build muscle, right? And um, and in this case, what I learned that your body can actually store more um, more fuel as well, more glycogen, um, and so. It, if you're doing a million steak days and trying to force your body to stabilize in a two pound window, but you're glycogen depleted and you know, you're trying to build muscle, but then you're not, you're forcing it to go back down. I, I just feel like you're kind of defeating the purpose of the exercise. And, and I just feel like in general, you're just gonna end up being so frustrated. Um, and the reason I know that is because <laughs> that's kind of what I went through at first. Um, when I finished my third round, I started CrossFit for the first time. And I, I was doing that at first, like frequent steak days. And like, man, my weight just like, bam, two pounds overnight, bam, two pounds overnight. And then I would do the steak day, but then would bam, go right back up. And um, yeah, and it was, it was really frustrating at first. And, but I was stubborn, I was stubborn. You know, I was like, I'm gonna make it, it's gonna stay there. Um, but it just wouldn't, <laughs> it just wouldn't, you know? So my smart husband, um, he was just like, you know, I think you should just work with your body. You're working out really hard. You're, you're building muscle, just let it go. Just let your body do what it wants to do. And in truth, I did know that I was sticking to phase three. It's not like I was cheating and eating popcorn or you know anything like that. I was strict P3. So since I knew I was doing what I felt were the right things food wise, I eventually decided to just kind of see where my weight went and stop doing all the steak days. And it was scary. It was scary to kind of let go like that. But I just decided that you know what I was doing wasn't working. Um, and I was getting stronger at CrossFit and, and it really did work out that way. Um, I'll share with you guys in a few minutes um, like some of my hydrostatic body fat testing um, to show that I really did get results by letting go a little bit. So I wanna show you guys um, hopefully now in a screenshot <laughs> um, of how my weight kind of gradually climbed up after my third round that I just told you guys about. So um, my LDW was 122.8 after my third round. And like I said, despite doing all those steak days, my weight just seemed to want to climb up and I kept trying to force it back, even though I was, you know, doing really clean P3. And um, that went on for like three weeks. And so you can kind of see, you know, my weight gradually going up. And then, you know, my husband suggested kind of letting it go, like I said. And um, the, the, the thing is, my weight was still climbing even with the steak days. You know, so that's how I knew that this just wasn't working. Like whatever it was I was trying to do and my body just didn't want to do it for whatever, for the reason I didn't know at the time, because it was still climbing anyway. Um, so basically my weight continued to inch up to 129 pounds. So that's about six pounds over my LDW. Um, and then as the weeks wore on, specifically starting from week seven, after the end of my third round, um, for the next couple of months, you can see that I did a lot of fast days in between my crossfitting, um, and I vacillated between 129 and 131 um, for the most part during that time. Um, and finally, I just decided to stop the fasting because I got the feeling that it was it was hampering my ability to improve my strength at CrossFit, and I could just tell that. Um, I like when I would work out after a fast day, 
even though I would have had dinner the previous night, so it's not like I, you know, I had eaten something, but I would just feel weaker. And then when it was a day I had eaten previously, and I worked, went and worked out, um, I, I would just feel stronger and better. And so I just felt like, you know, I feel like this is pre is preventing me with with my current goal. Um, so after I stopped the fasting, my weight went up to between 132 and 135 pounds during this time. Um, and I'll show you guys the two hydrostatic body, fast, body fat tests that I did during this time. Um, they'll be in the article and I'll show you right here in the video. Um, but basically the first one was taken at 124.8, which was my weight the first week of P3. Um, of that round. And at that time it said that my fat mass was 33.79 pounds. So almost 34 pounds of fat on my body and my lean mass was 91 pounds. Now my second body fat test, almost exactly four months later, I am 132.5 pounds. Um, so basically I was, what is that, um, close to seven pounds, 7.7 pounds more than the previous four months, four months before that. And that day I was 34.33 pounds of fat. So basically just about 34 pounds of fat. And I was 98, a little over 98 pounds of lean mass. So I know it's hard just listening to this, but hopefully if um, you look at the article or you're watching the video, you can actually see my body fat test. Basically out of that 7.7 .7 pounds that I gained, during you know like that four month period, only a half pound of that was fat. So 7.7 .7 pounds, um, only a half pound of that 7.7 .7 pounds was fat. All the rest of that was muscle and you know probably a little bit of glycogen stores. I, I basically feel that glycogen stores are seen as muscle in a hydrostatic body fat test. So you can imagine how I, how I felt because I didn't actually have that body fat test till the four months later. Um, basically, you know, ending my LDW at 122.8 and then being as high as 135 in the ensuing months. Um, that seems drastically higher, right? That seems like, whoa, epic fail, <laughs> you know, with HCG, gained back most of it. But that actually wasn't the case. Um, in general, I was around this 132 mark towards the end, and almost all of that gain was muscle, something to be proud of, exactly why I was going to CrossFit, totally achieved my goal. Um, but the only way I knew that was by doing that body fat testing, because since I hadn't actually lost any fat, my measurement went up as well, right? Because muscle does take up space on your body. It just doesn't take up as much space as fat does. So I still had inch increases even. So it, it could be so hard for me to know what was going on and I could easily have thought that I, I had totally failed, you know? Um, so I hope that that helps you guys because if you're going to do this rigorous exercise thing, um, you can, I'm serious, you know, you could just, you could end up harming yourself um, by not realizing what needs to occur when you embark on such a fitness journey um, and then think that you're failing when you're really actually succeeding, you know? Um, also, I wanted to point out, you can see on my charts that the month before my second body fat test, I didn't do any steak days or fast days. So that entire month, no fasting, no steak days, um, and yet still, they're out of that whole four months, there was only a half pound of fat gain out of 7.7 .7 pounds gained. Um, so, so essentially, if the 7.7 .7 pounds I gained had actually been fat and not muscle or mostly fat, my inches would have gone up a lot more than they did. I hope that makes sense. But again, that's kind of a thing where it's like, well, how much of an inch is fat and how much would be muscle if you gain two pounds? Or it's like, I don't, I have no idea. I don't think anyone knows that kind of information. So, um, so that's why getting that type of testing can be really, really useful. If you are interested in looking into hydrostatic body fat testing for yourself, like you're serious about this and you wanna really start building muscle and getting strong, you can either search hydrostatic body fat testing plus, um, you know, your area or location in Google, or you can search bod pod plus your area or location. And I will put all of this in the article so that if you're not sure how those words are spelled, you know, you can, you can 
go see that. Um, those are the best ways. Now there's one other way you can get your body fat tested and it's actually the most effective way. It's called DEXA, a DEXA scan, D-E-X-A. And these are typically pricier than hydrostatic. It's, it's basically kind of newer technology for body fat testing, um, but it's highly accurate because it actually shows you how much fat and muscle is on every part of your body. It like actually scans your body and shows you how many pounds of fat and muscles on your right arm and your left arm and your ankle. I mean, it's, it's really pretty cool. I've actually, I have done it a few times. Um, but anyway, so that's another thing you can look up with your area if those other two um, options aren't available, you know, in your area. So uh, with all of those stats and details, it's possible that I might have lost you a little bit. Um, I almost confuse myself a little bit sometimes. Um, but the point is, if you decide to exercise in phase, phase three um, rigorously like that, you, you need to probably know that it's very likely that your weight will fluctuate more frequently and that you will probably need to stabilize at a higher weight um, and kind of ignore that two pound rule. Um, that's, that's gonna be for other people who, who aren't exercising. I totally couldn't stabilize in the two pound window when I, because for me it was kind of like a double, double whammy because I both didn't eat fruits in phase two, which I talked about in my last video, and I was exercising in phase three. So I mean, I was in a, there was no way I was gonna stabilize in the two pound window. And if I had kept trying to do that, I would have, been doing just the steak days after steak days and if I just kept doing that um, in the end I feel I actually would have been hurting my body because it can take a toll on your health if you're if you're working against something and then here I am working out trying to build muscle but then it's not getting what it needs in order to build that muscle and when you do that you can actually lose muscle and, and end up in a worse condition so um, so it's just important to know all this stuff so anyway I hope you guys found that helpful um, Again, if you end up doing the exercise in phase three thing, I am not gonna promise you guys that you're gonna feel all confident and good and know exactly what's going on because you're not. You're not gonna know. There was many days that I was unsure. Um, you know, I, I essentially had this happen three, was it two or three different times um, that I was, you know, crossfitting after HCG. And um, I, yeah, I didn't feel more sure the second time. I mean, I kinda was more aware of it, but it's still disconcerting to see the scale, like, you know, having two pound gains overnight and not being, still not being totally sure, you know, so, but at least if you know this, it helps you to kind of let go a little bit and just kind of um, see things out. Ah, more planes. Stop the madness. Ah. So it worked out in the end, but there were definitely many days that I was unsure and you know, that may be your experience as well. Um, for me, in the end, it was worth it. Um, because, you know, the other choice, of course, is to just not exercise in phase three and, and wait till phase four when things are already fairly stable. Um, and you can certainly do that. Um, and if you don't want to go through all the craziness I just talked about, you know, that may be the route to go for you. Um, for me, I would just was so gung ho on, on getting to CrossFit and building muscle and just really, I needed to have another positive goal to start working on like right away. Um, and so for me, I decided that it was worth the extra, you know, stress and being unsure in order to just get started right away. So, you know, that'll be a decision that, you know, only you will know for yourself. All right, um, coming up is the third in this series um, for talking about when you need to throw the two pound rule out the window for stabilizing. And that is all about um, if you are finding that despite doing steak day after steak day after steak day, that your weight just will not stay where you were intending it to. Um, so we'll talk all about that in the next video. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Bye.